Hey guys, my name is uh, Jeremy Croslin. Um, I've been in this industry since 2005 or so. Uh, I believe that's when I started. I actually, like Vince said, I worked for a um, database company um, here in Tennessee, probably one of the nation's largest, and um, we specialized in compiling our own data. So we would bring in, you know, the Equifax file, the TransUnion file, Experian, probably 50 or 60 different files. And we knew which one had the best age. We knew which one had the best uh, income, the best marital status. So we, we, we took the best of all of these files, and we built our own file off of that. So for our consumer file, it, it, could, be, it could be pulling the um, age and income from a file or knowledge base and, and so on. And then we would bring in um, county deed records from about 3,600 counties nationwide on a daily basis to create a new homeowner file. So that database was updated, you know, every day. Uh, we, we were able to distinguish which ones were move, uh, like renters and which ones were homeowners based on the type of connect they had and, and if we had a deed recording or not. Then all that information got funneled into what we had, our, our, our standard mortgage database that was updated once a month. So with all that said, my background started in data um, I was one of the top sales reps there. I, I've actually met Vince uh, several times. I went out to Sacramento. Uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, I believe you were at the CAM show in, in uh, Long Beach whenever I was down there. Um, I think I did four trips out to Sacramento to work with his team. And um, we, we really specialized in the mortgage industry at that time. Uh, the reason why is because you can make a ton of money off selling names to mortgage companies. They had to mail every single week to keep their pipeline going. So, for example, um, a mortgage company, they may close a loan and make three to $6,000 off of that loan in fees and, and everything. Well, to do that, they were sending out mail pieces every week, some of them one or 2,000 pieces a week. I had one client that was mailing about 120 to 150,000 pieces a week. You know, so you can think, you know, you, you, you're making a, just easy math, if you're making a, if you got a guy mailing 150,000 pieces a week, you're making about two cents a name, what's well, $3,000 every week in, in net revenue that we we're making. So, um, long story short, the mortgage industry started going downhill. Um, our company went through several layoffs. I wasn't concerned. I had... Um, Two account managers basically taking on all of my all of my customers. That way, I could you know continually generate new business. And um, I, I knew in my heart that I wanted to start my own company. Uh, I've always had an entrepreneurial heart. I used to sell. I used to go to Sam's and buy gum, and then turn around and sell it at school for a dollar a pack when I bought it for fifty cents. Uh, I had a when I was twelve. Uh, I bought a lawnmower at a at a yard sale. Uh, made enough money to pay it off, took that money, invested in another one, and paid a guy down the road to go mow yards for me. Uh, we started cleaning gutters and made some money off that until someone asked me if we were licensed and insured. We're 12 and 13 year old kids, obviously we're not. We knew nothing about it, so we figured, you know what, we might want to call it quits on trying to build our empire. So that, that's kind of always been on my mind. So um, I actually. Uh, had a lot of prayer about this, talked to quite a few people, um, didn't know how this conversation was going to happen, but I actually approached my boss and told him that I was fixing to leave, start my own company. Knew right then and there that I was probably going to have to leave that day because in sales, when you threaten to do that, your your job's over. Well, he was interested in um, in doing it with me, which was kind of what I was hoping for. See, I had the sales background. He had the management background and, and all that, so... We uh, we put together a plan, and a couple of months later, we left, worked out our notices, and uh, we started Influence Direct. Uh, the company started out, we were actually selling promotional products, pens, magnets, shirts, mugs, you name it, whatever you can put your name on, because that was my background prior to this, and I didn't want to, the company that I worked for was so good to me, um, even in the bad times, that I had no interest in going out and competing with them, and... Um, starting my own business doing that and taking business from them. I had, I had zero interest in that. Um, so uh, later on down the road, we still like selling data. So we, we started doing that, you know, about a year later. Uh, and then I felt that there was a bigger need for print. 
uh, Vince can vouch for this. The, the direct mail industry can be very shady. Um, someone can pay you to send out 10, 20,000 mail pieces. As long as their call, phone's ringing, they're, they're not worried about anything. They know their mail went out. There's quite a few companies out there that will, you pay someone for 10000 they give you a really, really aggressive price that's pretty much nobody can beat. Um, obviously, that price, me knowing what I know now, is you, you can't really you can't really honor that price without not sending out their mail. So um, I, I call quite a few vendors out there um, basically stealing from people, and I, I felt that there was a need for a company that was going to be completely transparent. So, you know, we, we, we kind of switched gears. I went back out to California to learn from, this was actually after Vince had left, um, ironically, but I, I went out to that vendor, uh, learned a little bit about mail, um, sat with their sales team for about a week, and came back and decided, you know what, we're going to start selling print. Um, we were able to gain quite a few clients pretty much off the get-go. I, I had quite a few contacts in the industry. Um, people from... Um, just people re- would refer business over to me that, that kind of knew me in that industry. Then we wanted to make ourselves stand out a little more. So one thing that vendors uh, in this industry don't offer is postage receipts, uh, unless you ask for them. So, you know, we make we make 3602 postage statements readily available for all of our clients. That way you know that your mail was taken to the post office. This is how many pieces that were dropped off. This is the total weight. This is how many pallets signed and dated, um, and then we took it a step further and we wanted to offer um, daily delivery reports. So one thing, another thing that we do is whenever, if you look at a direct mail piece, you may not have one in front of you right now, but when you get home, look at them. They always got a barcode above the address block. Well, whenever that piece is scanned at its final post office, that means it's being loaded on the truck and out for delivery. So we partnered with a company who started embedding tracking codes into that, so we're able to track every single piece of mail, no matter where it is across the U.S., and, and find out exactly where it is. So now we're able to give people reports daily on how many pieces are delivered if they want, um, so they can make sure that they're fully fully staffed for that. Um, we know what days to mail first class to make your phones ring better. We know that you may, if you mail first class on a Friday, your mail is going to hit that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If you mail first class on a Monday, your mail is going to hit later in the week when people are ready for the weekend. Um, we turn away some business. Some customers or some vendors may take on any and every client. I've had countless clients that have called me asking about mail who I knew it just wasn't a good fit. and it, I was going to spend just as much time for a one-time sale knowing it's not going to work so I just flat out tell them, I was like, you can call other companies. They may sell it to you. I just, I don't think we're going to be a good fit because I feel like you're going to, you're going to waste your money. It's not going to produce. I kind of look at our clients as if, if, if this is something that I would truly invest my money in, then yeah, I'll, I'll offer that product to someone. But if it's something that I don't feel like I would, you know, I've got 12 years experience in this. I know what's going to work and what's not going to work. So if I know something's not going to work, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to refuse the business. Now I have had clients call my bluff and, and basically insist on me do it. I do it, they're unhappy, and then I have to have that whole conversation again to why I, I, I thought that we shouldn't. But the thing is with direct mail, there is, there's great money to be made. Um, the mortgage and financial institutions seem to mail every week. You can look at how much mail that you get from Discover and, and City and Chase Bank and all of these mortgage refinance offers. And the reason why is because they can afford to spend five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a direct mail campaign when one client's going to net them out five grand. So, you know, if, if all stars aligned and everything's great, someone mails out ten thousand pieces and gets a one percent response rate, they're going to have a hundred people call them. If they can close ten percent of those, you know, they're going to close ten loans. Well, ten loans at even four thousand dollars is a forty thousand dollar profit off of five or ten, fifteen thousand dollar investment. You can see why these people continuously mail. I mean, they the way they generate clients is through mail. Um, most of our mortgage clients mail nationwide or close to it. So they, they generate business all across the U.S. Um, based on whatever kind of rates they can offer people. 
Um, other industries that we do is we work with Farmers Insurance. We are a preferred vendor with Farmers Insurance for their agents to mail to generate um, uh, new policies. So if you if you own a home, more than likely you're going to get a mail from one of our farmers agents about three weeks prior to you getting your current homeowner's insurance renewal because we've got a, a program set up to where you can start looking at what they have to offer before yours gets there and make a decision. Um, one of the cool things on this screen that they have right now, something that we just recently implemented called um, retargeting. So uh, I'm sure most of y'all have browsed Amazon, and let's just say you're looking for um, an iPhone case, for example. And then later on that day, you're browsing through Instagram or Facebook, and you start seeing sponsored ads show up for iPhone cases that you looked for. You know, it, it's Amazon and companies like that sell that information to other companies. That way, that product stays in front of you so many times where you're like, okay, I, I need to buy this. Well, we can do that with direct mail also, meaning... Um, if we've got about a 60% match rate on social media profiles. So if one of your clients decided that they wanted to send out 10,000 mailers, we can match five or 6,000 of those to Facebook and Instagram profiles. So if you're going to mail out something on Friday and it's not going to get to them till Monday or Tuesday, well, we can start scroll down just a little bit. Scroll down to um, right there it works. So your ads can start showing up on sites that they frequently visit or Instagram or Facebook before your mail even hits. So you're kind of making a, a soft introduction to them via an online ad. That way whenever your mail piece gets there, you know, they're, they're, they've already seen your ad. They're more likely to respond. Um, not only can we do that, but we can track how many people saw your ad, how many people clicked on your ad, and how much time they spent viewing your website based on that ad. Um, they're placed on hundreds and hundreds of sites. The most popular ones, obviously, are going to be your Facebook and Instagram because that's where um, there's, I can't remember, 1.7, 1.8 billion active users, and they spend the majority of their time on Facebook. If you have a Facebook profile, I'm sure you're familiar with how much time you spend on there versus any other site. Um, yeah, like that right there, there's 50 minutes per day people browse their Facebook feed on average throughout the various times they check it throughout the day. Um, they did a recently study. And um, there's a ton of people to do that. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, direct mail is one of the things that for clients, I will say this, for clients who have never done direct mail, I tend to try to stay away from unless they just really want to try it because if they haven't done it, they're not going to be consistent with it. First off, there's not much money with those clients. Second off, they are going to complain about everything under the sun since they've never done it. Um, but I would suggest, you know, if you, if you get some mail pieces from insurance companies or, or auto dealers or um, mortgage companies, any, anything that you get at home, take a look at it. Those are the ideal prospects. We don't, we don't really want to go after the Discover and Bank of America people of the world. I've dealt with very large banks, large corporations in the past, and the profit margins are really thin. Their turn times are hard to do but able to do. And then if someone can save them a fraction of a penny, they're going to do it because if you look at their annual budget and you, someone can save them $150,000, $200,000 a year, they'll leave you in a heartbeat for it. You know, we've got clients that mail 1,000 or 2,000 pieces a week. We've got clients that mail 70 to 90,000 pieces a week. And I would much rather lose a couple of those one and two, 3,000 pieces a week clients versus my 70 or 90,000 pieces I have to handle with kid gloves. Um, that would be a very painful one to lose, even though the profit margins are thin. Um, I don't know. Am I, do you want me to mention anything about some of the profits, Vince? Um, yeah, that's like, like, you talk like about a net profit. The, yeah, some of the profits and, um, you know, because like I said, the two sides of it of the data and then also the mailing piece. And yeah, I mean, I can, just, I can just do kind of a broad range of a net profit on a client. Um, I mean, here, here's the thing, like a larger client, you know, you may make a penny and a half per piece, so, you know, $1,100 versus someone who's mailing, 
you know, 5,000 pieces a week, you know, you can make maybe 10 cents on. So, you know, that, that one client that's doing 5,000 pieces a week, you're making probably half as much as that other guy, but you can, you can easily gain 20 or 30 5,000 piece clients versus one or two of those 75,000 piece clients. Um, and the ones that are not, the ones that are mailing your kind of five to 10,000 pieces a week, those are ideal clients for us just because it's, it, this is a very competitive industry, but most people like to go after the large clients and only the large clients, whereas we kind of like your small to mediums. Um, we can handle a lot more. Um, I mean, a couple of years ago, we did probably 20 million pieces, 25 million pieces in a year. Uh, we're not one of the largest companies, but I'd say we're pretty large for our size and, and how long we've been in business. Um, but you know, we've got we've got, I've got people currently reselling our stuff kind of outside of this, and I cut referral checks every week. And some people are making a pretty good living doing this part time in addition to their full time job, just based on referrals that they get or them spending one or two hours a day making some cold calls or setting up meetings. So, I mean, the sky's the limit. I mean, we've got, we had, we had, we had a sales rep that worked for us um, probably two years before he left and just kind of, he got tired, he got burnt out on this industry. He just wanted to do something different. But, you know, he was, he was making $100,000 a year working 25 hours a week with us, um, just kind of part-time. So, um you kind of set your own price. I mean, you can really sell this for as little or how much as you want to, um, but we've got a pretty good idea on what the market can bear on this um, and how we're going to – I'd much rather come in at kind of an average price than, than something really high, knowing that someone's going to come and undercut me in, in a couple of months and, and steal that business from me. But the key, the key thing to a, a great – direct marketing campaign, as Vince said, comes down to the data, making sure that you are mailing the right people. If you go out and mail 75,000 pieces to somebody and the data is bad, you've wasted a lot of money. So with the background that I have in the industry, I know the data sources that are trustworthy and the ones that I wanted to partner with. Um, I'm, I'm, I even have an agreement with my previous employer to use their data at any time, and I do. And I use a couple of different sources because I know, I know which ones out there are, are, are good. If you, if you were going to Google and search for data or a mailing list or whatever, you're going to scroll through pages and pages and pages of people, and some of them are just someone who works at their house reselling the list, and some of them may be a large company like an InfoUSA or something but who has a marketing budget to – actually do a, a Super Bowl commercial like they did a few years ago. But making sure that you are mailing the right people is, is going to be more than anything. That's, that's going to show the effectiveness of your, of your campaign. Um, you know, if, you mail, if, you mail, you're, if you've got a mortgage offer or an insurance offer that you're sending out and these people don't own homes or it's not even close to time for them to renew, well, no one's going to respond to that and even if they do respond they're going to respond and say that you're this is bad information or you know something like that so making sure that you're you're hitting the right people at the and another thing is timing you know I, I always suggest people mail the same people multiple times you know maybe maybe buy a list of 5,000 pieces and mail them this week and two weeks later mail that same group of people with a different offer um, I've had clients actually test that out with tracking numbers um, looking at response and analytics and close rates and stuff and coming to find out that sometimes it takes three times to mail someone before they make a decision, but whenever they're ready to make a decision, your name's going to stand out in front of them versus the competition who either didn't mail them or only mailed them one time. So um, in a nutshell, direct mail is just it's, it's a great marketing program uh, for those who use it. It's very profitable and it's a very, very easy sell. When you're talking to someone who's currently mailing, they know what's working. They may be looking for an incremental lift. They may be perfectly happy and just want to save a few cents. Um, we've we've kind of got clients all over the all, all over the range. We, we've had clients more to work with us with some of the added values and stuff that we have. Um, and I always try to quote a little higher just to kind of feel the water. You know, if someone wants to tell me where they're at. 
obviously I'm going to crunch numbers as hard as I can and, and do my best to try to match or beat their price. Um, but at the end of the day, some of these people, they're not worried about the price. They're worried about, they're worried about what you can offer, how you can help them out. Um, some clients are willing to pay a little bit more because at the end of the day, they know that they're going to generate more business, and it's worth it. Um, uh, that's really that's probably it in a nutshell. I know that was kind of a long-winded speech, but yeah. And um, Jeremy, uh, appreciate uh, there, and we're going to open this up for questions a little bit. <clears throat> a couple of things I want to bring in is um, so he's talking about there's there's really good clients like auto um, insurance. Uh, can you list a couple of the again some of the really good ones? Uh, and a lot of these people are going to be seeing some of the auto companies and saving them money. And this is another thing that you can bring to them. And can you kind of tell the like as a sales rep like how you would approach a business owner like can we do a competitive bid on your um, your campaign, or can you just kind of tell the, like a, an approach to as a salesperson to a business owner, and also a couple of the industries again? Yeah, sure. I mean, if, if I'm if I'm talking to someone who's currently doing mail, I mean, the first thing I want to ask is is how it's doing because on any given week, it's either doing great or it's doing okay or it's doing bad. Uh, when I say if all the stars and moons align and someone is getting a one percent, and that that's that's the kind of crazy thing about this for that client that's mailing 75,000 pieces a week, he's looking for a 1% response. He's looking for 750 people to respond to that mail piece. Um, it may not seem like much, but like I said, you know, if, you, if you've got 750 people responding and you're able to close 10 of them, you know, 75 and say he's offering a service where he's making, you know, four grand a piece, the guy just generated $300,000 on a 75,000 piece campaign that probably – Cost him thirty-five or forty thousand dollars. I mean, he's he's making ten times the money almost. So on any given week, someone's perfectly fine. Someone's having a bad week, or it's, it's just an okay. The first thing I always do is just find out, you know, how long have you been mailing? What are what are you mailing? If you could change one thing about your direct mail campaign, what would that be? And that usually opens a door. I mean. Nothing is perfect. No one is perfect. So if there's one thing that people can change, obviously it's get a few more calls or to save a little bit of money. And usually we can help with both of those. We've got we've got a creative team. We can take a look at what they're currently mailing. You know, like I said, we've we've probably done eighty to a hundred million pieces over the past handful of years. So I kind of know. I feel like I have a really good idea of what works and what doesn't work. I mean, I can usually look at a piece and be like, yeah, that's not something that most of our clients would ever mail out. Um, so yeah, I feel like we can help you by doing this, this, and this. The other thing is, is they're looking to save money. Well, you know, if you don't mind me asking, where are you paying? And I'll just tell you right now whether or not I can beat you. Because, I mean, if I, if I can't do that, then I'm wasting your time, you're wasting mine type type call. But most of the time, people are looking to get better results. At the end of the day, if they can save money, that's great. Uh, it's not, it's, you know, five years ago, it was all about saving money. Now people are just looking for better results. And a lot of it's just the economy is going great. The housing market's going great. There's very good job security. Um, you, like I said, if you can save a little money, that's great. But if you can add two or three, four, 10, maybe 20 extra clients a month by making minor changes, by paying the same amount that they're paying right now and picking up new business, they're automatically getting more revenue. If you divide that out by piece, they're still, quote, unquote, saving money. Um, so it's kind of a, a net wash on that. But that's, that's probably the key question is, if you could change one thing about your campaign, what would that be? No one's going to, like I said, no one's going to say absolutely nothing. If, if they do, they're lying to you. Yeah, one thing that um, when, when I was doing Yellow Page and, and I decided to come into this industry is um, I like the fact that it, it it is residual because if you get one of these clients, like like he's talking about, some of these clients mail out massive amount of mail on a regular basis. And every time they mail, and some of them do it weekly, right, or monthly, every time they oh, mail, you get paid a commission. Yeah, 90% of our clients mail weekly, which is great. Now, you know, we've got some of them, 
some of them have been with us since like 2010, 2009. And out of those, we've actually, I failed to mention this, we, we actually have an online web to print system where we have some of our clients, their letters on there. And some, some people are comfortable getting their own data and using a different mail house. And by all means, if, if they're not having any, the thing is with the mailing list, if someone is not having issues with bad data, I usually try not to sell it because that's just one extra thing that they can complain about. If, if they're happy with the quality of their data and they're just looking to increase their you know, response via making changes to their mail piece or maybe saving a little money, that's, that's where I really think we can shine. But a handful of clients that we have, I, I never even talked to. They, uh, they upload their data to our website, generate a proof, check out the job, I double check everything, we process the data and it goes straight to press and those are, those are weekly orders that we're making money off of and we're not doing a thing. I mean, those clients for you, you literally wouldn't be doing a thing because we would be doing kind of the, the back end work and, and everything. So, but yeah, mo these clients, they, the thing with mail is once you start mailing and, and do the investment on it, you have to continuously do it because once you stop, your, your whole pipeline of leads just diminishes. It goes away. And uh, the people that are currently mailing, they're comfortable with spending tens of thousands of dollars each week on, on stuff like that. So, um, one, Yeah, one of the things that uh, we've done here in Agora is we've made it where you don't have to know everything about mailing campaigns. Like when, when I first got into the business, you know, it was kind of like, you know, walking into China learning a whole new language because there's so much to learn about postage and most of the money actually goes to postage and and you and there's whole algorithms and there's whole ways of save, saving the company money in their postage because that's that's where a lot of this money goes right that's why you don't want to make any errors you want someone an expert that's doing it to make sure there's no errors and um, a couple of things I like about this is how we are able to track with 800 numbers that he's talking about and um, and you can actually get you can actually see live results because we were working with one customer one time and he said hey I didn't give him any calls and we pulled up the 800 number that we got for him and go wow well you got a three percent response and we went in and listened to the calls that they were recorded and listened uh, with the sales rep so it, it's a very trackable industry and like you said it's very profitable for the companies that do this and um, and also like he was talking about like their mail pieces. Millions and millions of dollars have been sent, uh, spent for us to be able to go, this mail piece works because there's so much data back in it, and they tweaked it, and that's where they've learned, like, this is a really good mail piece. But for you as a sales rep, we just want to get you enough information uh, to get them over to Jeremy. And, uh, and, and Jeremy, uh, Abel, can you go over to the forms page? And if you have a client that is interested in a mail piece, you can click on that, Jeremy. This is where you're going to go to uh, – I just want to add in, you can, you can actually click right where it says here, but then we also have a, vis a visit special offer site. Either one of them will take you to the same page. Okay. And then, uh, Jeremy Crossing, can you kind of explain, like, what will happen when they fill this form out? How to fill yeah, the form out, and then what would happen on the back end so they kind of get the whole sales process when, when, yeah, once they get a client. And he, yeah, one, yeah. I'm sorry, one thing I want to add in is, uh, and then once once you get the client to Jeremy, he will take over, and you probably don't even have to talk too much to that client anymore once he gets some, um, especially the mail on the right, he'll handle it from there. So, Jeremy, there you go. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, if you, if you can just get someone that's remotely interested and fill out this form, once this form's filled out, and I have an idea, if you scroll down, it's got, you know, the company name, uh, the person's name, phone number, email, and then a few different uh, questions on, like, the quantity and type of mail piece they have. That's enough information for me to get on the phone, and I'll close them. You know, if, you, if you, you're basically going to generate kind of a, if you want to think about it like this, you're going you're gonna to generate kind of a warm lead and just hand it off, and that's, I'll, I'll do all the rest of the work, and then you get paid off, off of that. So if someone were to fill out this form today, um, I'll give them a call today, I or somebody else in my office, more than likely me, because I, I want to make sure to handhold the first handful of clients to make sure everything goes smooth. But um, I'll, I'll give them a call today, get some more information. I can have them a quote 
either on the phone or, you know, within just a few minutes and um, kind of go from there. Um, what I will do, and I'll keep kind of a spreadsheet in the cloud with, you know, the client, you know, maybe Vince, you can kind of, I don't know how you want to give access to that or if the clients or, or if any of the Agora reps want me to create kind of a, uh, let's just say John Doe is on the phone here and he has 10 clients that he's referred over to me. Well, I can make a shared spreadsheet kind of in the cloud with kind of where we're at on the process uh, on this client um, or, or any kind of trackable way that you would like to. So, Yeah, they can um, just include them into the uh, tracking system that you have. He has a pretty complex uh, tracking system. I don't know if we'll show it on here, but we're, we're basically – the customer could upload their mail piece on their own, and then from there uh, they be able to track the job. And then he also shows them the postage receipt. Maybe you can explain that um, de in a little detail to them. Yeah, once once a job, once someone. Now the process is pretty simple. Uh, we can upload the job where the client can. We'll have them approve within minutes because we we do everything. Um, We've got a software called PageFlex. So we, we set up all the art. We can generate proofs within minutes where some people take, um, you know, 24 hours to generate a proof. You know, our, our speed and efficiency is definitely on point. Um, they would approve it. We have an approval form where they physically have to sign off on it, um, a hard copy, or they we've got an online version, uh, basically making sure they've double-checked everything. I then do one extra step, and I'll, I'll, I'll test every phone number. I've got clients that have been mailing the same number with me for four years, and I will call them every day they submit a job on that number that's on that mail piece to make sure it's ringing to them because the last thing you want to do is send out a ten or 20,000-piece job and your phone number not even be right on your mail piece. So that's just one extra step that we do take here. Um, if a client uploads a job, I, I don't let it go to the press until I physically review every piece. I will print it off and make sure all the merge fields are populated. Um, and then once the job is ready to print, uh, we'll print it. Once it's taken to the post office, I download my postage documents from the USPS Post of One site, and then I can put those in a folder for the client. Um, or I can send it to them any, any time they ask for it, or I can make it standard to send with every job. Most of our clients will ask for it the first couple of drops. After that, they're just comfortable. I still keep them on file for a rainy day in case someone happens to ask for one if calls are low and they want to verify everything. But, you know, after, after you do a few jobs for people, they're, they're typically kind of un, uh, comfortable enough with you to where they don't really ask questions. They just send you a job every week. Why don't we uh, go ahead and open up for any questions? And uh, Jeremy, can you go back to the uh, Gora site, and then um, we'll also um, we'll scroll through here, kind of showing this. But are there any questions out there that you have? Um, this is Larice Webb. I had one question about the data, um, as far as like leads. You mentioned um, Info USA, and I've worked with them. Um, Actually, I, they you know they give you out 500 leads um, just to, after you fill out a short form, just for you know um, I guess to build that rapport with you and you kind of can see how how um, efficient uh, their leads are. Sure. Do you all have anything like that? Um, Y'all do. We currently don't. I I can talk with my business partner. We could probably you know I I don't mind maybe doing something like that for someone if I if I feel like they're for sure going to be a client of ours it's just so and the reason why is like at the company that I used to work for in the past we did something like that and a, a lot of the clients wouldn't do business with us a lot of them were just looking for free names and and the reason why is like they would come get some from us there was another company doing it, and then info usa you know at the end of the day they did that and got a 15 1500 pieces and basically got a free campaign out of it uh, they weren't willing, able to see which data was better by doing it like that. But if I if I truly feel like someone's going to be a client, if I, if I feel good about it, I don't mind doing something like that. Possibly, I mean, yeah, it, he, it doesn't really cost much of anything. I can eat that. Um, it just for them to see kind of the quality of the data. So I can I can talk. I'll talk to my business partner. He's on another call right now, but I'll, I'll talk to him about that. We could we could probably work something out. Yeah, even if it was a monthly amount, I think right now competitively, um, Info USA, they're offering me something, um, and they're doing the retargeting, as you know, if everything you spoke about, I'm familiar with. And um, 
I think they're doing something for $49.99 a month, and then they have a subsidiary that's doing uh, where you can actually have access to their data bank for yeah. roughly 48 hours, but then after that it's cut off. So, um, you know, I was just wondering because, I mean, it would make sense to, you know, I'm a part of Agora to be able to go to you all versus saying, hey, I'm using this other source for leads because I'm um, a lot of – many- Sorry. For that for that forty nine dollars that you mentioned, how many names did they give you for that? Um I have to go I have to check and see, but I think it's I think it's I might be wrong, but I think it's um unlimited. I could be wrong. But I can yeah. find all the details out and yeah, um like that information. That. Sure. But yeah, Thank I mean you. we we can, and, it, and like I said, it, I mean, I have nothing against them for you. I think I think they're a great company. Um, they're a large company. They they know what they're doing. They they do something very similar to what I did at my previous employer. Um, and I've I've got clients that currently mail with us, and they use InfoUSA data. So I mean, it's I really don't have. I, I think they're a great company. I think there are certain files that we definitely have a competitive advantage over them, and a lot of other people are. Um, but for the most part, their their consumer data, it's it's consumer consumer data is really hard to mess up when it's usually just age and income type data. The the data where I think we truly have a competitive advantage over is your your mortgage data where we make sure to have the correct loan amount, loan dates, etc. And really our our new mover and new homeowner file, I hands down think we can squash any of our competition. For example, our, our new uh, our new homeowner file we've got we've got two of them. One of them is uploaded weekly one of them's uploaded daily so is if the county published your data today as you've been a new homeowner i'm going to have it tomorrow where you can mail them a mail piece sooner than anybody else um, same thing with new mover if you go and that's that's kind of the difference let me back up for a second our new our new homeowner file is going to be county deed information so whenever someone whenever someone closes on a home and it's recorded at the county level, that information is sent to us. For a new mover, that can be anyone who moved, whether it's a homeowner or a renter, and that's based on where we see that someone's address has changed or someone has connected a separate phone line, but that phone line has to be at a different address because, you know, if someone's setting up a, a separate phone line at their current address, they're just installing a new line at their house. Or if they set up Dish or Comcast at their current house, they're setting up a new server. But if if my address shows a phone connect or TV connect or cable connect or any kind of change like that, national change address, at a different address, that's going to be a new mover, and we get those we get those daily also. Okay, see, I work with Charter Spectrum um, right now. I'm with, dealing with direct sales. Um, they give us 500 leads, which is mostly just addresses. Um, that's it. And so um, I understand, and I also used to um, sell life insurance. So yeah. leads are very, very important. And if it was a way that we could um, basically work something out through Agora to where we can have a lead generator as well um, for uh, whatever amount, I believe it would help a lot of agents and agents, all of the agents would use it themselves, especially with this stride campaign that, you know, of course, Vince knows about. I mean, this is very big on that real estate side as well. as I think you mentioned um, car dealerships, yeah. things like that. Yeah, we, we work with um, one of the one of the largest uh, REMAX agent, agencies across the U.S. We actually kind of white labeled our, our back end program for them for and I've got a 600 agents registered as users right now that hopefully it's going to start sometime first quarter next year where we've got, um, let's just say, 20 different postcards on there. Some of them are just sold or just listed or I'm a new real estate agent, here's my information, and they can upload their um, mailing list or we can supply them one and, you know, it's going out to people. Or and Another thing with the real estate industry, it's, it's kind of unique compared to other ones. A lot of there's there's a third component to direct mail. You've you've got your first class delivered in two to three business days. You've got your standard class, which USPS says seven to twenty one. I see it more like five to seven, um, depending on where it's mailed. And then you've got carrier route. Carrier route is you you know that the guy that drives a mail truck in your neighborhood he is driving a a route to houses in your neighborhood. So we can buy 
that person's route. So the, the thing is for insurance or for real estate professionals is if they listed a neighborhood or, or a house for sale in, in my neighborhood and they want to let all the other people know that this house just listed or, or more so just sold um, because you know people in your neighborhood. So, for example, my neighborhood has got about 300 people in it. I don't know everybody, but if a house just sold in my in my neighborhood and and the real estate agents let me know and I'm looking to sell and they you know say that it sold in 36 hours at seven thousand dollars above asking price, that's enticing enough for me to want to maybe call that agent and say you know what we're looking to move also I, I kind of like your your sales tactic you know what can you do for me so we can we can get as targeted as, as mailing the houses around the one that just sold and only those houses. That's yeah, that's awesome. I also have a. It's, it was funny that you you mentioned farmers. I went to a networking event and I have an agency owner um, for farmers right now. And um, so, like I said, I, I feel like it'll be a great uh, relationship that can be built with um, these different facets that you have. You know, for these different unique cases. The simplest thing for you to say to him is say just let him know that you've got a you've got a direct mail program for X dates. The letter X. And then the word dates, he'll know exactly what you're talking about. That's that's expiration date. So whenever you, you get a insurance renewal um, policy every year and it's within the same month that you bought your house. So if I bought my house in October of, when was it, 2010, every October I get a renewal uh, for my insurance policy. Well, our farmer's agents mail them about three weeks prior to me getting that renewal that way I get it before I get mine. I can compare numbers and see that th- that one's better. You've kind of got a, a competitive advantage to go with them. So a lot of our farmers agents are doing that. That's awesome. And I'll make sure that um, we figure out something, especially through events. I know we can come up with something because um, we're, we're targeting all businesses. And with this Stride campaign, it seems like what you have to offer goes hand in hand with it. Thank you. No problem at all. Hey, Jeremy, Dan Ray here. I got a question for you. Sure. So I'm not, I'm on the phone. I'm not actually looking at the webinar, but do you concentrate or focus on just postcards or do you do two page and four page print? Yeah, I mean, actually, postcards are probably 5% of our business. Most of our, most of our business is uh, letter work or snap packs. Do you know what a snap pack is? Yep. So we, we do a lot of pressure seal snap packs and a lot of letters. Post postcards are usually typically mailed by insurance agents and stuff, and maybe auto dealers. We've done we've got an auto agency that kind of does a little bit of everything, and they'll do postcards for some of their clients. But from for something like an insurance company or uh, a financial institution or something like that, letters are more. I guess perceived as professional. Plus, if you if you're doing a refinance offer to someone, people get offended if you have their mortgage amount, their lender name, and new payment stuff on the postcard where anybody and everybody can see it, and it's not sealed in an envelope. Um, insurance agents love snap packs because it looks looks like we've got we've got a couple of them that have been approved uh, with farmers in the past. I need to see if they still are, but it's yeah, it's a snap pack. It, it says. Um, 2017 annual renewal notice. You know, once you open it up, you've got a full formal quote as far as like your your dwelling, separate structures. It even says your premium. So, any, anything that has kind of sensitive information to someone, or it's a financial institution or something like that, we prefer to um, use envelopes or snap packs. And we have tested out postcards in that industry, and they just tend to not work as good. Sure. So you do do print, though, as far as uh, two-page or four-page? Absolutely. Okay. So it, you being in Tennessee, is that correct? I am. So do you, who do you use out here on the West Coast for print and distribution? Uh, we've got a company in, San Diego, in Southern California, the San Diego area that we use. We've got one in uh, Dallas, Texas. We've got one in, uh, I forget, Missouri. We don't use them much. It's more for, like, embossed credit card stuff. So, so who's the one in SoCal? Uh, I'd rather not say the name right now. Okay. All right. Not a problem. Because um, I work with a lot of them, so that's what I was just trying to figure out. Yeah. Um, uh, we could probably maybe so, have a conversation to make sure that I'm not stepping on their toes because they – 
they actually don't work with a lot of direct clients, so I doubt it's them. Um, most of the time, if they okay. have a client call in, they actually refer them to us because they, they th- this company deals more with grocery stores and uh, metropolitan um, municipals. Any any other business, they usually tend to refer it out just because it's kind of not their specialty to go through the sales cycle and, and do that versus someone like us and vice versa. Like we. We we actually supply the mailing list and stuff for a lot of the grocery stores that do new mover campaigns. So kind of a they refer us a lot of business. We refer them business. At the end of the day, they run a lot of our print work, so it's a win-win either way. Okay. So just for clarification, so price-wise, you're going to be very competitive. Yes, sir. Out here in California on the West Coast. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank and you. I appreciate that. We can we can we can look at some numbers. I can. You know, if it if it's something that I know that we're not going to be competitive on, I mean, I'll I'll flat out tell you. And you know, for someone, you know, one thing that we can do, um, and a lot of people can do this, they just choose not to. But you know, if someone's mailing a large amount standard mail to a concentrated area, are you familiar with like drop shipments? Yes. So we we can do drop shipments. We can do um, we can do co mingling, which I usually try not to do. Um, and the reason why is because Co-mingling, we cannot provide a postage receipt because it's mail that's co-mingled with. It, it it may be 500 jobs and a million pieces that's co-mingled together that they're going to take to USPS uh, to drop off and get a discounted rate. Several companies are preferred co-minglers. Um, our, ours is not, but he we, we actually know several co-mingling companies that can pick up mail. Um, but... The thing is, is you can't track it. So once it's commingled, I have I can't provide postage receipts. I can't provide tracking reports. I can't do anything because it's tied with a million other mail pieces. But for some clients, it's worth it. Uh, most clients, it's not. But you know, if we can provide any kind of savings with drop shipping, obviously we're going to do that. I mean, my, one of my clients is doing almost ninety thousand pieces a week. We're able to, um, and he uses us mainly because. We're mailing it from Texas to Texas residents. We're drop shipping it, which is saving them about three cents a piece. And because it's mailing from one state to that same state, he's getting first class speed with it. So that's that's a huge advantage for him. Hey, uh, Jeremy, can you, uh, Jeremy Abel, can you go to the uh, contact page? Uh, we also want to know can, if they have a client. Uh, Jeremy Crossan, can you kind of tell them, like, to call you and <clears throat> how, how that would go? Yeah, you can You can either fill out the form or you can call, email me. One thing I would suggest is make sure to, if you email me or call me without filling out the form, make sure that somehow it's mentioned that you're, uh, you came from the Agora Advantage Marketplace. Um, the reason why is because I'm going to be a lot more competitive with my price than you guys versus selling to someone else because I know you've got to mark it up and stuff. So just make sure uh, to let me know that's where it came from. I, obviously, that's going to be a way that you guys get paid also. But you can, you and like and I, w- I would recommend everyone on the phone, um, if you have a client, um, I would just get them to Jeremy and let Jeremy do the whole um, negotiation because you don't want to leave any meat on the bone, and he's an expert at this, and he wants to make sure you get, you, you know, that one, we want to save them money, or, or like you said, it's not always about saving money, but we also want to make sure that um, we don't take any, you know, meat from you, because he, he can potentially get more um, on that deal. So it'd just be better if Jeremy, if you, especially if you're not familiar with the industry, just let Jeremy handle the whole thing. Just get the client to Jeremy. One thing I highly recommend, though, is if you're working with someone, um, you can fill the form out, and Jeremy could call them. But it's almost like a cold call if that if that customer doesn't know Jeremy and his company. So one thing that I've learned, especially if you got a good one, is I would do a three way phone call with Jeremy. Do the handoff. You can still fill the form out. But that handoff will go way better than just filling the form out and then hoping uh, that Jeremy closes it because uh, these people who don't know Jeremy, they know you, right? Yeah. 
and depending on how that, and sometimes it's hard for, you know, for that person to get a hold of them that route. So fill the form out, but also pick up the phone and say, hey, Jeremy, I got a guy. And if you can get a three-way phone call, especially if it's a really good client, it's worth your while. And then it's a, just a better handoff to the company. And I, I believe it was Dan that I was talking to a minute ago about the SoCal stuff. There's my contact information. Um, feel free if you have any questions or something, we can set up a call. You know, talk about. It sounds like you have knowledge in this industry and you have some potential clients. I mean, I'd love to, you know, pick your brain with it or something. You know, we don't have to do it today or just you know, kind of any time that you're that you want to maybe have a, have that conversation. I'd love to chat with you about it. Hey, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, Steve Rose, real quick. Uh, I'm sorry. If, I'm sorry if I missed it, but do you do demographics like age, income, net worth, that type of stuff? Yes, sir. We sure do. I figured you did. Thank you. Absolutely, no problem. Yeah, the data is going to be very key to this. Yeah, and the, and the thing uh-huh. is with this, there's there's some people out there that strictly just they're not looking for mail. They're just looking for a data list, and there's some people that are looking for just mail. There's some people that are looking for both. Um, so we can, you know, we've kind of got all ends of the spectrum covered. Um, to be honest, I'd say most of our clients, um, probably, I wouldn't say most, but the majority of them, uh, over half of them send us their own mail file. And, and a lot of that's because they've got agreements in place with other people. You know, we may win the business next year when it's time for them to renew some of the contracts. All of our insurance agents, obviously, we, we provide the mailing list because we have the exit information. Um, and then we've got some grocery stores, like I mentioned earlier, that we don't work with directly, but we supply just a mailing list um, for their new mover campaigns. And some of those grocery stores, like Albertsons and them out west, they, they strictly mail um, new movers multiple times a week as soon as they can get their hands on it. So we can do um, just a little bit of anything. But, yeah, I mean, the age, age income, net worth, marital status, presence of children, um, the demographics on the head of household, the demographics on the secondary person in the household. Uh, I, I may see if I can – I know I've got it somewhere. I may see – we've got over 150 different selects on our database. Maybe it would be worth kind of putting that together in a spreadsheet so y'all can upload it if you have any clients that ask. Yeah, we could put that into a PDF. Um, also, one thing, too, is um, speed. Uh, Jeremy, like the, the other day, Osiris was working with a client, and um, I was able, Jeremy was able to run a list for me. I think he got it within a half hour. I mean, he got it really quick so we can kind of get the data. And then they also mail out within 48 hours of that upload. Maybe you can talk about the speed and how fast it can happen if they do have some on the line. Yeah, and we, I mean, we can do it in less. We typically, and the reason why we say 48 hours is because we, we really prefer not to rush things because you start rushing, things get looked over, QC may get missed, there's there's less drying time for, like, color jobs depending on if it's digital or offset. So, you know, 48 hours is pretty standard, but I've got a guy that we usually, our cutoff is usually 4 o'clock central time on Wednesday, but I've got some clients that still will send stuff over um, on Thursday morning, and we mail it out on Friday. It's rare cases, but it can be done. Do you, do you have a website uh, on this on Agora that we can look at? Your website. Yeah, okay. give them the website, Jeremy. Are you are yeah? If you go to uh, influencedirectalloneword dot com, if you can pull it up, and it's got a lot of our basic information, like that's our direct mail page, so like it's just kind of some of our work, like click on view more, like on the snap hacks, for example. Uh, yeah, those, that's just some of the work that we've done. Um, some of it's outdated, you know, obviously that Medicare one down there in the right, in the right corner has got a 2013 date. So we're still doing that piece, but it's just I haven't updated the site. Um, we've got, like, if you go to services, hover over that, and then um, direct mail ROI calculator. A lot of our clients like using that um, just to kind of get an idea on what their ROI is going to be. It's just kind of the quantity mail, price per piece, 
conversion rate and all that, then it will spit out some numbers below that. And then if anyone's ever curious on equipment, because a lot of people nowadays are, uh, it's under about, I believe, the uh, printing equipment. That's got a list. I actually I need to review that, make sure it's updated. I think it pretty much is. But we, we do, like the iGens, they're going to be a full digital press. Beauty of that, those machines are, if you were to send out a post, even just a postcard to um, 5,000 people, um, we've done this in the past also for um, auto dealers. So if an auto dealer has the year making model of a car, we had a licensed database at one time with every year making model of that car. So uh, my piece that I get is going to have a 2016 Dodge Ram on it. If my wife were to get that piece, it's going to have a 2014 Ford Explorer on it. So it's it's personal to that. Uh, for any demographic information we have, I mean, we can put, uh, if we have uh, age and income and gender, you know, we could create a library of those age, income, and gender people and put that on a mail piece to kind of appeal to the person receiving it. So um, digital prints, the way to go nowadays. Uh, in the mid-2000s, it was kind of newer technology. Now it seems like everyone, everyone does it. But this right here kind of gives you an idea on the equipment and how many pages per minute that we can print. Um, and then, yeah, the inserters and stuff like that. That's going to be the majority of it. And a lot of people don't care about that. Some of the larger companies will or someone. If you're talking to an ad agency who has a lot of clients and they're doing broker and print for, sometimes they ask, what, what kind of presses do you use? And ours are going to be all Xerox machines. Um, do you still do things such as, like you said, um, maybe like with magnets and things like that, the way you started in the beginning? Do y'all still do that? We don't. Um, I, I could at any time. Or if, if it's something that, uh, yeah, I, I could get into that again if I want to. Um, a lot of I have an ASI number, um, so I've got access. I've still got access to all of my vendors, and I've got like, Special pricing. So, for example, if you were to order 100 magnets for a client, you know, I got pricing on 5,000 or 10,000 magnets that I can sell at a 200 magnet pr price. So, my, my pricing is pretty aggressive on that. But, yeah, that's something that I haven't done, that I could get back into it. Okay. And I was just wondering because, I mean, it's always good to be able to, um, you know, uh, if they mention something like that, they're active, actively doing. And um, this question is for Vince. Basically, if we, if I was to go into a business or multiple businesses and sign them up for the fourteen ninety five package, they would then be able to go in and shop in the marketplace and um, find you know companies like this and just say hey, engage with them and we'll receive a referral from that the same way, correct? Yes. Um, the beauty of Agora, and I tell people this all the time, we're kind of like an Uber, um, Amazon and Costco. So we're kind of like an Uber because we make thousands of um, – Uber makes, you know, millions of dollars off of other people's cars, and they don't even own a car, right? And so we're, we're reselling products like this and companies and services. And then we're like Costco because it's a membership where they get deals and discounts. And then we're like Amazon where when they get a membership, like or you come into Amazon or you have Amazon Prime, you have to go in and shop. They can come in, and if that customer is yours and they pay the fourteen ninety five and get that membership, they have access to all of this. The difference is when they're logged in as a um, as a member compared to you, there's going to be some tabs that they're not going to see. And we set these tabs up like many websites. So, there, Jeremy, could you go back to Agora real quick? If you look at these tabs, and why don't we just walk through here? Um, you know, the description about FAQs, reviews, plans, forms, all the way up to contact is what they will see. The training, support, marketing tools, and commissions are tabs that the advisors see. So if you're going to sell the product, so you guys can get as many people, and I would suggest it, you know, and this is one thing I love that Keith teaches is becoming a destination. Agora is a, de a shopping destination where they can come in even without you, and if they buy – from this, if they if you sign them up as a member and they buy, 
I don't care what they buy, you still get that 45% commission. It's just built into the whole structure. That doesn't change. Does that answer your question? I think we just lost them. Just oh, did he drop off? off. Yeah, so, I think, yeah, I think yeah. he lost the call. Um, so hey, this that's is the beauty Troy. Of Laura. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, just had another quick question. Um, what would be a really good um, kind of an elevator pitch uh, for somebody who's already using direct mail? Uh, I think it goes to it goes back to you know if someone's already using direct mail, they kind of know, and they most of them's been doing it for a while, so they they kind of know a little bit about it. I think the easiest thing is if there's one. I go back to it all the time because it's worked for me. If there's one thing you could change about it, what would it be? It's kind of an open-ended question because, again, for someone to say absolutely nothing, they're they're lying. I mean, everyone wants to change something about something they're doing, and most of it, most of the time, they're going to come back with, "Well, I'd love to save a few cents, or I'd, I'd love to try to increase my response and try to generate new people." And that's something that we can typically help on both of them. Um, you know, if they were to say something like that, you know, obviously put them in touch with them and let me see if I can get them a competitive bid. Or if they're looking, if, even if they're just looking to maybe get some creative examples and and try something in addition to what they're doing. And that's and that's one thing that we've we've done a lot of. If someone's someone's mailing five or ten thousand pieces a week um, pretty consistently, I, I highly suggest them to test out half of that with us for two weeks and see see how it does. We'll we'll even provide a, a tracking number if we need to um, to show them that either we're a getting them the same results and saving them money, or or maybe b getting them better results, or c maybe maybe the best of both worlds. You're getting more results and you're saving a little bit. Uh, sometimes that's even you know obviously possible. So you know, again, maybe just trying to figure out. Everyone, everyone wants to change something with it. They, they always do. I've yet to. I have had a few people tell me nothing and hang up. You know, I called them back and said, "Hey, I think we got disconnected. You know, I, I wasn't, I didn't hear that, or you know, something like that." And some people. Well, here, here's an example. Um, Vince, do you remember Curtis Peterson from back in the day? Not offhand. Sounds familiar, but I forget. So he was, he was working with uh, Andy back then, and he was mailing, I want to say 250,000 pieces a week. I called that guy maybe 10 times, and I, I knew that he was mailing a lot because I had received multiple mail pieces, multiple people that I had collect. We, we used to pay people on Craigslist to collect direct mail when we first started so we could call on it as leads. Uh, it was cheaper than hiring, hiring salespeople back then. And I, I knew that he was mailing a ton, and um, I called this guy, he probably ten times, and he never answered. Then one time he said, hey, I'm, I'm good, I'm busy. The next time he said, hey, I, I, I told you I was good. Uh, the third time he, he actually asked me to stop calling him, and the fourth time I just happened to call him on a week where he had a really bad campaign, and I said, you know, Curtis, I've been trying to get in touch with you, and, and you know, my, my biggest concern is you're, you're mailing a lot of mail. I know this, but... What could you change about it that's going to make it better for you or your team? I mean, can we can we try to generate more calls? Will you be willing to test it out? Can we try to save money? His first order was like, I thought he was joking when he said, I need 200,000 games and I need it today. And I gave it to him. Um, didn't even get his mail business at the time. Came back and ordered some more. Well, a couple of months down the road, he was one of my, one of our biggest clients. I mean, we just we called him at a time. That's that's the, that's the thing. Persistency with these because indirect mail, whether it's the economy or people mailing into the holidays, like we we're we're telling people not to mail this week. Some people are still wanting to, but in my mind, I know I'm personally going to be mentally checked out of work for the first part of next week, being home with my family on the holidays, uh, doing Christmas with them recovering from a weekend of a lot of running and gunning, Tuesday trying to slowly get back into work. Everyone across the U.S. is going to be like that. So I'm telling people personally, I would not mail this week. Your response is going to be bad. You're not. You're going to throw away money is what you're going to do if, if you if you mail this week and it hits early next week. Because you're not only hitting them right around Christmas, you're hitting them the week before for, um, New Year's also where some people are using their kind of last-minute vacation days and completely – completely gone they're traveling they're not even getting their mail so a lot of it's timing so 
with it, with that being said, sometimes you got to call them multiple times and and try to catch them on that time when it's not doing good. Um, but you know, again, I always go back to if you could change one thing about this, what would it be? Um, nine times out of ten, they're going to give you an answer, and nine times out of ten, it's going to be one of the two that I've mentioned. Other other times, it's who knows what. But everyone wants to change something. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Why don't we uh, take one more? So um, I think we are. I think we got it then. I just wanted to add it in one one thing real quick uh, that I thought up on my screen for the last few minutes is as Jeremy sent us over an ebook or kind of an overview. Um, I'll pull this up on my screen really quick just so you guys can can take a look at this as well. This could come in. Uh, come in handy for you all. And the reason you see the superhero, that was kind of our theme a few years ago. We, we considered ourselves a direct mail superhero. We were saving people something or helping them out in some way, and it's just kind of some marketing material that's, that's worked well for us. This Postal IQ is a pretty good, pretty good read, uh, if you feel like taking a read. That's actually helped us kind of gain some business because, you know, like the – when, pe- when you think about mail, the post office processes billions and billions of pieces of mail each year. We actually have an interesting blog. I need to pull up their, their one from this year, but every year they put out a case study on how many pieces of mail they've done, how many computers they have. And when you, when you think if any of y'all have been in, in the backside of a postage, uh, a USPS facility and seen how the mail is moving around, you would think that it gets lost. You have no idea how it works, but they they track everything to a T. Um, it kind of helps educate you if, you if you know that the mail's dropped off at the bulk mail center and it, it's kind of like a hub for an airline and then they're going to distribute it out to the SCFs and then the SCFs going to, you know, it's just, it, if you're talking like that to someone, they think you know what you're talking about, they're going to be more apt to do business with you. Yeah, it's a learning curve. I actually went to the one in West Sacramento, the main hub there, had a full-on tour because we were, when, when I was doing it, um, I was probably two blocks away from them. And uh, so I got to go in there. Got you know We got very tight with the postal people and saw the whole thing. They, they track everything. They put a scan, even if uh, they don't, they put a scan on every, uh, they put a tracking code on every piece of mail and the computers are picking it up and making sure it's getting sent to the right place in their whole their whole digital system gets it right to the right, uh, um, right to the right truck, plane, or wherever it's going, and, it, and it's quick. Yeah, uh, speaking of quick, it's they scan. I can't remember the exact number, but it's either ten or twelve pieces of mail can be scanned per second at their at the facility. So in one second, they've got over ten pieces of mail. Every barcode is being scanned in in one second. And right now it's Christmas time. You know, which is ironic we're doing now. This is when they're their busiest time because everyone's sending out Absolutely. all the Christmas cards. And, I mean, they just get bombarded. Probably started, what, like November, and it just amps up because all the Christmas cards and everything going out. And then one thing I will say, when there are big elections, like we had this past year, sometimes mail can slow down a day or two because there's – extra campaigns of millions and millions of pieces for candidates that are going out. Um, so I always let people know anytime there's a big election going on that your mail may be delayed a day or two. Just There's only so much they can handle. They, they handle the post office is very well. They do a great job at handling mail. It's just when you have, you know, an extra 20 million pieces of mail thrown in it across the U.S. this week or 50 million pieces of mail or maybe even more, um, it can slow it down a day or so. It's just they've got so much extra to process and deliver. But other than that, it's pretty much like clockwork. I mean, I I know that our clients, and most of our clients mail first class, and they can save money by mailing standard, but most of them mail first class just because they know when I mail first class on a Friday, I'm going to get calls early in the week where standard Standard mail is always going to go behind first class, and every if we drop mail off at the bulk mail 
entry unit, standard mail can sit there for up to three days, depending on how much first class mail they have. When it goes from there to the next facility and the next facility, it can sit at all of those for up to three days because they have to get first class out. First class is like insurance. You're paying a premium for it. So standard mail can, that's why they say seven to 21 days for standard mail. I don't ever see it take that long. I see it, like I said, more like five to seven. And we, we've, got a, we've got kind of a delivery chart on here under the facts at the very, uh, at the very bottom. Um, this is an estimate. It was updated in April, I believe. I need to see if there's a new one. They updated every two to three months. Was, as of last month, they didn't have a new one on. But this is like this shows you first class. So, you know, there's California. Your mail is going to be delivered in two days. Sometimes next day. Anywhere else across the U.S., it's one or, or three days. Where if you go back to the standard one, close that one out. Click on the next one over. There's kind of your average day. So I don't see really, other than Alaska, I don't see any of those 18 days. But if you look, the majority of it's going to be in your red and then your orange with the triangles. There's six to seven days for standard mail. Um, you know, some of it may take longer, some of it may take less, but I usually see it in five to, you know, five to seven is pretty, pretty standard. And we try to mail as much standard mail out of our Texas location as we can because whether you're mailing Texas to all over the U.S., it's pretty centrally located. Again, if you're in California and you're going to mail standard, well, I'm going to mail your job out of California because you're going to get standard prices, which is about 10 to 12 cents less than first class, but you're going to get the speed up first class. If any of that makes sense. Well, um, Jeremy, because I wanted to let oh, you know, sorry, I, I, my call, um, my browser, some type of way, timed out. But um, basically, from what you all were saying, you sign them up for the fourteen ninety five, and then you just um, you become their consultant, and they work through you. But they're already in position, and then you are you're in position to uh, make the commissions, no matter if they go in without you or not. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, you're going to make the commission with or without you. If they click in there and buy something and they're your member or anywhere in your downline, you're going to make uh, the commission based upon whether or not you're down. If it's a direct uh, member to you, it's a 45% commission off a of CV value and then down in your downline. So, okay. you know, there's – so one of the things that one of the big pushes we're doing here and the way we set this up is uh, Agora is a, de a shopping destination where business owners can come in here. And we're going to have other products, too. I mean, we're going to have, you know, we're, we're teed up. I, I, even this week alone, um, see, one of the goals with Agora is to find the best of the best and uh, products and for and business solutions. And we're even going to have other things, other products, right, that they'll be able to buy, buy from. And um, they come in here, and they can shop and buy with or without you. Yeah, this is this is awesome. I know I've been with Agora now for you know um, for a while, but it's like an epiphany. I'm like, hey, just go to these different places and just put them in position, and then tell them if they have any questions when they're going through their marketplaces or areas of interest that we when we first talk. You know, just um, keep me in mind then. But after they get familiar with the marketplace, showing them what they have, they're going to go and shop. I mean, with a whole other sense of urgency, and they would almost look at everything they have going on right now and say, hey, let me see with this heavily, you know, discounted um, rate that I have. Let me see if I can swap a few things out and save some more money. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, we're also not, you know, we've made partnerships with GoDaddy Hertz, you know, and some big names, but we've also will introduce new technology, um, new game strategies for them, stuff that they like, like Sotellus, for instance, they may have never even known about that product. So you're exactly right. Uh, to finalize this call, um, Jeremy, I really appreciate you. Um, I just want to say that, like I said, I've worked with Jeremy for years, and there can, like, you know, integrity is really crucial. And uh, he has a proven, you know, it's proven to me his integrity. And we were even talking the other day about some people that were non-integrous that we worked with, and we had to quit working with them because they didn't have integrity. You know, they they were fudging 
the documents or the data, and it's really it's really sad because it's just lying and it's bad character. But when you find someone as knowledgeable as Jeremy and um, and the background and his experience, you know, this is invaluable. So this is a really great, great resource, and it's one of the foundations. You know, mail, direct mail is a big deal. And you never know, um, you know, we're here to open you guys up as sales reps, uh, your opportunity, because, you you know, once we show you this, it's just going to open up a whole new stream of income for you. And you're not going to get better than Jeremy as far as knowledge, data, you know. And if he doesn't know much about it, he's got the resources to get it. And that's another thing is he's deep in resources, like he said. So if he, if he gets approached with something, he's got the connections to make the call and then research it out, which is pretty powerful. So yeah, thank you, Jeremy, for coming in here. Yeah, no problem. Were you going to say something? I was just, just going to say, I mean, that, that's that's the thing. Like, if, if I'm if I'm approached with something that I'm clueless about, which and I have been, I I don't try to make something up and force myself to act like I know about it. Because I mean, there again, that may be there. I've done. I've I've had several people approach me about. From industries that I knew nothing about, for example, the hearing aid industry. Um, apparently, there's a big market for people that are setting up seminars for seniors to go to to get discounted hearing aids. I knew nothing about it, and I told the guy, I was like, you're going to have to give me some time. I know nothing about this. Continue doing what you're doing. If it's something that I feel like we can really help out in, then obviously we will. Did some research, and I haven't done anything with it in a few years, really, other than that. But, I mean, this guy ended up doing some mailing with us. We were able to save him some money. He he really only got about the same number of responses and stuff. But he was the only reason I kind of ventured out to try to learn it is because he told me he was paying about a dollar a mail piece. Well, for what he was mailing, I would normally sell that piece to someone for sixty two cents. And deep down inside, I knew he was getting robbed. I'm like, you're mailing out ten thousand pieces and and paying forty cents more than what I would charge someone if you're doing that every he was only doing it once a month for the seminars but i'm like over the course of the year and he'd been doing it for like three years you know he's he's way way overpaying and it was more one of those i felt bad that he was paying that much and and i was like yeah i'll i'll learn about the industry a little bit to try to you know come in but i wasn't going to take on his business until i was well diverse and educated in it myself because at the end of the day then i'm just i'm basically coming in and trying to save him money, which I was able to do, but if he were to come to me with questions, I know nothing about it. So I try to try to prepare myself a little bit. And if it's something that I'm still not going to know much about it and I don't think it's a vertical that we're going to entertain and try to go after clients with, I'm not really going to try it because for one client it's almost not worth it. But, you know, that that's me personally. So if you guys come up with clients that are doing mail-in industries that I'm not as familiar with, I'll learn it, and I'll figure it out, and I'll, I'll contact all my resources that I have, and somebody's bound to know something about it. If, if not, they're already currently doing it. They can they can help me out because I'm not going to not learn something and turn away something that's going to be profitable for you just because it's not in my interest. I'm going to learn it. That way you can make money off of it. We're going to make money off of it. You're going to continue to go after it. Who knows, you may, one of you all may grow uh, a direct mail vertical that I've never even thought about at some point in time and something that's not competitive and I mean it's, it could be huge the hearing aid industry I, I need to get back into that because that is a that is a huge market I just haven't really been focused on it um, but that is a that is an, a, an industry if you you to go to Google and type, type in hearing aid direct mail you'll see companies that are doing it and basically what they do is they set up they set up seminars and mail male seniors to come get fitted for discounted hearing aids. I mean, you would have never thought that direct mail would be an industry for that, but it, it works. Yep. Well, once again, thank you, Jeremy. You, you did a really good job today. 